Hi guys, it's Jake here at Canadian Cutting Edge, and today I've got two knives that were sent to me by GearBest to review. These two knives are very similar, so I'm going to do them together. They do come in different scale options, so uh, don't get distracted by the fact that they're both the same. Uh, there's actually a couple different options for either one of these. These are both Wee Wednesday knives, so we've got small Warncliffe blades. That's similar about them both. Um, they're both most likely Sergei Panchenko designs, but I can't find the actual um, original designs of these. Anybody who can find that for me and give me links to the evidence of it, hopefully, even if you just get the exact name, I guess I can look for it myself. These are copies that have been made and uh, are sold through the brand Fura at the store Gearbest. You can find them at other stores as well. And uh, I'd like to take a look at these two odd little flippers. They're actually quite cool in their own way. All of Sergei's stuff is really cool. The guy's got a brain that I just, I, I really get into his stuff. 90% um, of what he designs, I'm just totally enjoying. And uh, these two designs really look like they're Sergei Panchenko designs. And so uh, let's take a good look at these today and uh, see if you want to consider buying one of these or not. That's totally up to you. You decide after you see what I think of these things. Stick around. I don't normally do size comparisons. Most of you know about the San Renmu 710, now known as the 7010. And uh, let's put it beside one of these knives to see what it compares like. Uh, you know, like that. You line up the pivots maybe here. We've got the pivots lined up on these two knives, and you can see the difference there. Uh, the 7010 is a fairly small knife. Uh, if you take a look at the bigger brother, the uh, 9103. No, this is the 9104, right? The 9103 is just the satin version. The 9104 is the black wash. And line up the pivots on these, and you can see how small that knife is compared to your regular full-size knife. I've got large hands. I've got large hands which border on extra large, and that just fills up this knife. And a little bit extra. So that is quite a bit smaller. I'm going to talk about both of these knives today because there's a lot of similarities between them both. They both have S35VN stainless steel. They uh, are both frame locks. They both have the same style um, handle scales on them. You can either get them with this sort of hash pattern or you can get a smooth stone wash pattern. The uh, ones that have the hash pattern like this have no markings on them at all as far as identifying a designer or manufacturer or anything. The ones that have the smooth handle scales and um, just the stone wash pattern on them have Sergei Panchenko's uh, logo on it, the SP inside of a circle logo on it. And uh, I really don't like it when people use other people's brands on their knives. It's just wrong, 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 wrong. Um, I know there's enough people that find copies to be, you know, a very bad thing. I draw the line at using somebody else's brand name. Uh, anywhere, either in the description of your item or in the name of your item, or even worse yet, on the item itself. So these two knives, I don't mind that much. So let's take a close look at this guy first. What we've got is a dramatic Warncliffe here with a swedge on the front, a flat grind, a saber grind, and uh, a little... I don't know if that's supposed to be a finger choil there. I think it is uh, supposed to be like a sneak up choil like this. And there's a little choil up here as well, which is kind of cool. Uh, index finger here and your other fingers there. So if you use it like this, you can get your hand on it and your thumb can rest in here. And you've got a lot of strength to use this knife, a lot of pressure. Um, another way to use this knife is to put the index finger in there and do a pinch kind of hold. And uh, you can do a lot of delicate work that way with this and get a, a really good grip. Just jam that end into the palm of your hand. And uh, you can really use this knife in a lot of cool ways like that. Uh, the frame lock, 
uh, on both of these knives locks up quite well. You can see it in that picture. So you can see that the lock up there is quite good. Um, it's just due to optics that this knife looks like it's all twisted in here. It's not all twisted. It's just when you zoom into things, uh, the camera lenses tend to do some weird, weird stuff. That, that blade is straight in there. And when you close the knives, blade centering is quite good. So there you can see that the blade centering is uh, quite good when the knife is closed. We've got a couple other unique features on these knives. Um, the first one here has got a lanyard hole, and uh, this guy does not. The um, hardware on here is kind of kind of cool. Let's turn this one over so you can see them both, and we'll zoom back in again. On the working side, you can see there's Torx right there. On this other side, it's built like a uh, sort of like a pyramid, a round pyramid, a cone. That's a better word for it. And so you can see how that sticks out nice and sharp like that. And uh, you just have that Torx hole right there. And then this guy's got one uh, backspacer, not backspacer, <laughs> open pillar for the open pillar construction. This one's got one pillar. This guy's got two. And uh, they look pretty good. They've got that hourglass kind of shape to them, which looks kind of nice. I don't know, kind of redundant to have two of them that close together. I'm not too fond of that look. I, I sort of prefer this look of just one in there. Uh, maybe if these were spaced out just a little bit instead of directly next to one another. I don't know. This one is available at GearBest in a silver blue. That's what this is. And a silver green combination. And the uh, flat stone wash one is called Golden. Um, this one's got a couple other colors as available as well. The um, Both of them have a bit of a hole here to uh, actuate the uh, blade when it's closed. You can put your thumb in there and open up the knife. Works really well. Um, you can do it one-handed if you start with your flipper and then finish with your thumb. That's how I tend to do it. You can also do it just with your thumb if you want to. They're easy enough to open and close. They're a little bit tricky because they're so small to get used to with one hand. Uh, the, you can't flick these ones open and have them go really great. That's because they both have one little flaw. The uh, ball bearings in them tend to have just a slight kind of a little bit of grinding to them. I don't know if they didn't lubricate them. I haven't taken them apart yet. I will take these apart and show you pictures of the insides. Uh, but just listen to this. If you've got headphones on, I'm sure you could hear that. Uh, this guy doesn't make that noise. All I did was put in a tiny bit of oil and it's nice and quiet. I just have one of those oilers that has one of those needle tips to it. And I just put a little bit of oil in with the bearings and now it sounds much better. Okay, let's do some of the sizes on this stuff before we distract ourselves too much. Let's start with this little guy. This guy, uh, Gearbest calls it the pocket frame lock folding knife. I'll put a link in the description below so that you can uh, go check these out on GearBest and maybe buy one if you want to. Before I do the sizes, uh, the handle scales are titanium. At least that's what they're calling them. They're non-magnetic, so they probably are a uh, you know a cheapest titanium. Is not cheap, but probably the cheapest kind of titanium they could get at Fura. And um, other websites are saying. Also that this is S35VN, you know, that's a powder steel. So other places are claiming the same thing. So hopefully it is S35VN. Uh, we can't know for sure because we weren't there. And um, when you get really economical knives like this and they're taking other people's styles and actually putting their brand on some of them, you sometimes have to wonder if it really is or isn't. And I just don't know for sure. It feels pretty good. I did take... Uh, this one to my sharpening system and did a little bit of sharpening on it and it's very subjective but it sort of feels like it might be s35vn it is a nice hard kind of uh 
steel. It feels like it's about Rockwell 60. It doesn't say on the website. All right, let's do the sizes for this guy right here. Maybe we'll zoom in just a little bit. Let's do the sizes for this little guy. We've got a cutting edge of four centimeters. That's 1.58 inches. Blade length, so from the middle of the handle right here to the tip of the blade, 4.9 centimeters, 1.92 inches. The blade thickness, 2.9 millimeters, uh, 0.115 inches. The thickness of the edge behind the grind is 0.69 millimeters, which is 0 0.027 inches. A little bit thicker and heavier than I'd like on a small knife like this, but it does cut pretty well. and. Um, you know, it really might be S35VN because it does cut quite well. It keeps its edge quite well as well. The handle length is 7.1 centimeters, which is 2.8 inches. The grip area, and I decided to include this finger choil here. So from this thumbnail to this thumbnail is 6.6 .6 centimeters, 2.6 inches. Uh, the handle thickness not counting where the screws are bulging out just a little bit or these screws at the, the pivot, just your basic on the handle. 9.3 millimeters, almost a centimeter, uh, 0.366 inches. Total length of this knife when it's open, 12 centimeters, 4.75 inches. This knife weighs 52 grams and that's 1.8 ounces. Now for this little guy, cutting edge, 4.5 centimeters, 1.8 inches. Blade length, so from the middle of the handle to the tip of the blade, 4.9 centimeters, 1.92 inches. Blade thickness, just like the other one, 0.29 millimeters, 0 0.115 inches. The uh, thickness of the edge behind the grind is 0.61 millimeters. That's 0 0.024 inches. So this guy's got a little bit thinner edge behind the grind, which is more attractive to me than this guy. That's not saying that every single one of these is going to be the same. I think that uh, it's just due to the individual grinding. So my guess is for all of these knives that you might get from the store, it's going to be somewhere between 0 0.6 and 0.7. That's my rough guess. Millimeters, that is. The handle length, so this whole titanium slab up here, 7.2 centimeters, which is 2.84 inches. Uh, the grip area on this guy is between the two thumbnails here, 5.1 centimeters, that's two inches on the nose. The uh, handle thickness right here, 9.2 millimeters, that's 0.362 inches. The total length of the knife open is 12 centimeters, which is 4.71 inches. So they're very close to identical. Let's talk a little bit about the uh, prices of these knives. First, the price for this guy. Uh, like I said, it comes in two different colors in this hash pattern, silver blue and silver green. And the price for that is US dollars $26.99, Canadian dollars $34.12, Euros $22.96, and British pounds, uh, 2048. This guy, we've got loads of models for these as far as patterns of the handle scales, and they're all the same price. Uh, you have uh, blue green hash, uh, gold green hash, gold purple hash. Those are my school colors, my high school colors. Silver blue, which is what this one is. And then you've got just blue, gray, or purple in a smooth stone wash. Those smooth ones again have SP for uh, Sergei Panchenko's logo on there. Prices for all of these: U.S. dollars twenty six ninety five, Canadian thirty four oh seven, euros twenty two ninety two, and UK pounds twenty eighty one. So there you go with the prices. I already talked about the cons on this. I'm just going to refresh your memory. I'm not too fond of how much noise the bearings make. They don't feel super smooth, but a little bit of oil can smooth it out quite an awful lot. So when you get it, if you buy one of these and you get it, uh, get yourself one of those needle nose applicators. Like it's like a hypodermic needle kind of thing, just a little bit thicker and get some oil inside that pivot. If you're not going to take it apart and uh, some really light oil so that it'll have much better action for you. 
that's one of the negatives. One of the other negatives is it's a little bit tricky to handle these things. So it's not a knife that you're going to flick open and um, enjoy playing with. None of them have much of a detent on them. Uh, well, sorry, not none of them. Neither one of these has got much of a detent. The detent's a little nicer on uh, this guy. Uh, that being said, I can only occasionally get it to flick. Well, actually, now it's flicking nicely. This is the one I oiled. And I oiled it just before I started the video. So maybe that's all it needed. This guy has not been oiled. And so there you go. I just can't get it to flip open all the way. Then again, the detent is a little bit weaker in this guy too. So that being said, you may or may not be able to flick these open with the flipper, you know, very aggressively. Um, you know, they haven't got an awful lot of weight there and stuff to, to get moving, not a lot of momentum. I prefer a, a blade with some belly on it for cutting things through slicing through things. So this, I think, is a better cutter than this guy. They're both got nice tips to do uh, tip cutting. That's a really good thing. They're both very much the same weight. Uh, didn't talk about the weight, did I? This, this guy's a little bit larger, 52 grams, 1.8 ounces. This guy's 48 grams, 1.7 ounces. So just a tiny bit smaller, which means it's got that tiny bit lighter. The pros on this knife. You've got a designer knife, basically, for a really low price. That's a big pro. Um, good traction in hand. I really like this hash pattern. Uh, another positive is I like this one with this extra choil right here for your finger. A small knife, you're going to want to do more sneaking up to do more delicate work. And this guy's really good at that. The little bit of jimping that's up on here, it does help a little bit to get a little bit better uh, grip on it especially if you're pushing down this way. It, it does help out. It's not so aggressive that it really hurts, but those are big jimps in there. <laughs> big jimps. Uh, so when you push your thumb in there, if you did do some hard work for a while, it's not going to be too comfortable. That being said, both of these knives are not very comfortable to do you know, any extended work at all. It's just not that good for that. A uh, good thing, I like the steel. A uh, good thing, they cut really well. Let's Let's do some cut tests in front of you right now. I tend to cut with my left hand, so I'll hold this uh, stuff with my right hand. It zips right through that, no problem. Let's try it with this other knife. So now we've got a belly. Hold it right straight. And it zipped through that pretty good. It took a little bit more force. And remember, this guy's a little thicker behind the grind. So you've got that factor. Let's try some of this paracord. It's really hard to get more than a couple layers of paracord and still hold everything. Cut through that pretty good. And let's try it again with this knife this time. Cuts through that very good. I like that. So in my cut tests, uh, both here in front of you and in my own testing, this guy was cutting better and it's all about the thickness behind the grind. Although normally I like bellies better. I already mentioned it, but this guy's cutting better because it's a little thinner behind the grind. It does make a difference. If you put the knife down, that touches and you can never really cut with the belly of the knife. Unless you're cutting something that you're holding and you're going to cut like this, then you can cut with the middle of the knife. If you're cutting straight down on something, you're always going to be cutting with the tip on this knife. This guy, as you can see, if you're going straight down on something, you can cut with the belly of the knife. So if you often are cutting with the belly, you, know, you want a cutter like that, well, then you're going to choose this guy over this guy. But it really depends on what you want, what you like, what you prefer. I like both of these knives. I think they're a little bit pricey for what you get. Uh, there's a lot of other choices at GearBest that I would probably, maybe not a lot. There's other choices at GearBest that I might choose ahead of these. But it's really about the style. Uh, if you want this style, <laughs> this is what it is. This is what you're going to get. And uh, this is what you're looking for. And if you really like the style, then the price is just right. Do I recommend these? Yes. Uh, do I recommend these highly? I like these knives. They're nice. They're small. 
they're discreet. Sometimes you just want a small knife with you. And uh, sometimes you want something a little bit better than, you know, 7CR17, 8CR13 MOV. You know, you want some decent steel on a small knife. Here's your chance. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks for liking, commenting, sharing, subscribing, and all that good stuff. Remember to always cut towards your chum and not your thumb.